sorry, so delighted and honored today to be joined by our friend Oscar Edwards, who's a good friend of Dr. Sherwood and I, and he's familiar to some of you, but to many of you and um, delightfully familiar and to those of you for whom he's completely new, we have something amazing in store for all of us. And so um, Oscar is the um, chair of the Minority and Women's Entrepreneurship Educators Group at USASB. Um, he's the, um, he's with the Higher Growth Strategies. Are you the principal, managing member is what you go I'm by. I'm the managing member and Great. consultant. Um, and certified true storyteller. He's a growth coach and an exit planner. Um, he's on the finance faculty at the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program at um, Los Angeles and Long Beach City Colleges. And he's an advisory chair for UCLA's beloved community initiative, um, which is a uh, with uh, Reverend, Mar Reverend Martin Luther King Jr.'s Remembrance Day and C. Bernard Jackson Bridge Builders Award. So Oscar is a wonderful delight and a truly entrepreneurial spirit. And we are so delighted to be here with you today, Oscar. Um, and we just have a great day ahead with you. Thank you, thank you, Matt. And uh, can I add a little bit to that? Yes, please. <laughs> Just to give you a little context for my background, I'm a, I'm a parent, I have three grown children and um, uh, my oldest is 35 now. He's an entrepreneur for 10 years now and he runs a, the second largest independent uh, concert hall in Oakland, California. He owns a restaurant and he owns, he just opened an organic food store in a food desert in an urban community in the Bay Area of California, Northern California. That's my oldest and my, that's Oscar Jr. And then my second oldest is Ivan. He's an electrical engineer and he works as for BAE, which is a major supplier to Microsoft. And my youngest is my daughter. She's my pride and joy. And she is Christine, uh, is a robotics engineer would carry her out of Atlanta and she builds robots. And so all my kids are, my wife, Anita is an attorney uh, who we met through a business association, <laughs> like you asked me. <laughs> and so just to give you some context in life, I'm a, I'm a Southern California native. I was born in California, West Coast agricultural community uh, Riverside County agricultural community, my adult life on the beach, Venice. I grew up in my college days in Venice, California. I don't know if you know, heard of Venice, but Venice was like the West Coast between Seattle and Venice was where all the music happened. Seattle, San Francisco, and Venice, those were all the three places where all the top artists played for free back then. You didn't even have to pay. It was beautiful. So that gives you a little background on me, and I'm happy that I got the invitation by Meg to share. So behind me, just to give you context, that's an event that actually happens tomorrow at UCLA. It's the Beloved Community Initiative. It runs for two weeks. It's tied to the event when Martin Luther King came to UCLA in 1965 and spoke to the students about getting involved and leading the change relative to civil rights in the South. So a number of students from UCLA went and marched with Dr. King uh, down South to fight down, break down the walls of uh, segregation and to create opportunities for greater civil rights. So UCLA has a, a strong connection with civil rights uh, really across the country and the world uh, in taking a leadership role in the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa years ago in the mid eighties. So I've been involved in all those movements and it is my pleasure really to share a learning experience. What you're gonna to hear today comes from my experience first with the professor, Dr. David Bolge, who was a professor when I was in graduate school at the Anderson School of Management at UCLA, who I worked with on my first research project, 
I went into entrepreneurship straight out of business school with the vice chancellor at the time who retired and said, I'm going on sabbatical and I want someone to open my consulting office. And he recruited me. I knew nothing about running a business. He basically went on sabbatical and left his consulting operation to me. I was thrown in the fire. That's how I got into business. And David Bolge was one of our first researchers doing community research and social science back then. And I just was on a meeting with him, a Zoom call last week, and he actually showed me the initial community networking study that we did in South Central Los Angeles around Reaganomics. And he showed me that the same model that he built in is what led to what we're doing today called true storytelling. So it was amazing seeing this actual handwritten diagrams, no computers, typewriters. He showed me the same diagrams, amazing stuff. But anyway, we're gonna talk about true storytelling today. So whenever you're ready, Meg, we can start our program. Would you like me to share my screen? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. So if you hear my dog, I'm at home. So you may hear, he's not a big dog, he's a little dog, but he has a big bark. He's a chihuahua, but he has a big bark every now and then. So I apologize for that in advance. Okay, so we are ready. So is the screen popping up? Yes. Okay. I, here we go. Apologies. Do you see the screen one? Okay. I don't see. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see where my screen is at. All right, there we go. Here we go. Perfect. <coughs> Sorry. How's that? Yeah, great. Okay. okay, so you can see my screen now. Uh, this is True Storytelling, Conversations to Heal Intercultural Raci Racism at West Washington University, Entrepreneurship and Innovation Class, April 19th, 2021. My name is Oscar Edwards, a Managing Member of Higher Growth Strategies. True storytelling is what we're gonna talk about today. Next slide, I've kind of already done the introduction. Uh, you basically got my introduction. So I'll be facilitating this process. This process is about you. It's about you sharing with each other, you creating space for each, each other to hear each other's story uh, in the context of uh, intercultural relations that uh, focus on aspects of racism, bias, uh, and challenge that we have in accepting someone else's story. So we're gonna process through all of that. Next slide. So consider this a learning lab, basically with the intent to briefly introduce you to the power of true storytelling, uh, which has seven principles to share and integrate stories of implicit and unconscious bias that we may have to explore how to deconstruct and reimagine and restory a more ethical um, and equitable society or way of thinking. And using both what we call indigenous ways, which are more nature driven or natural ways and understanding race ways of, of dealing with folks or differences of dealing with folks uh, versus uh, the traditional Western alignment, which is more the textbook. So we're leaning toward nature versus uh, a written word in that sense. Next slide. So here's our, our program uh, for this evening. Uh, we've done the welcome. We're gonna do a uh, uh, purpose. I'll go over the purpose in more detail. We have ground rules for this process. And I'll outline what we're going to expect. We'll do a breakout, a brief breakout. Part two, we'll focus on the first two principles of the, the seven principles involved. Uh, the first principle is truth. 
uh, being, first of all, being true yourself and allowing uh, yourself to hear the truth of others. The second principle after we go through uh, a number of rounds of hearing our truth is to start making room for stories. So we'll be doing a set of breakouts to actually move through this process. And we'll talk about the, uh, the ground rules uh, going forward here. But before that, next slide. We have a little uh, process for you, uh, introduction. So I think, uh, Meg, you may have given this some, uh, this is a, as an advanced assignment, but I wanted you to, to, I want you to tell me your name and I want you to identify something that you would associate with your name or your consciousness in nature. Could be, you know, anything in nature. We're all in nature. Could be a plant, could be an animal. Uh, could be an artifact, a rock, a river, anything that's in, in nature. And then I want you to identify something, whatever you have available to yourself, uh, that is going to represent your talking stick. So my talking stick is a West African ukulele that I'm holding up in front of me. And we're going to use the talking stick process, which reserves the space for the person who's holding the stick to talk until I relinquish the stick. Either I'm going to say ho or like a horse, ho or stop. Okay. Or I'm finished. And I would pass the talking stick to the next person who would have their talking stick. So that's the process we're going to model uh, throughout the evening. Okay. So we're ready for names. Um, we can just go around. I can't, I'll have to open my screen up to see everyone. You want to take us around uh, the gallery, Meg, and, and just call out um, their name and then they can give us their nature name. You have any order you want to go in? Okay, I can call no, them out. I can, oh, either way. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Okay. So I'm going to start with uh, Gavin. I think uh, what I have written down here is owl. OK. Any significance? Give me a quick significance. Why? I like to ask a lot of questions. And I feel like owls typically ask questions in media. So I went with that. OK, cool. Thank you, Gavin. OK. And uh, Bruno. Um, <clears throat> so just, just anything in nature? Yeah, anything in nature. Nothing man-made. Yes, you got it. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of options. I'm going to go with the ocean. The ocean. Okay. Why? Why, Bruno? Um, it's just free-flowing, just out there doing its own thing, you know? Okay, cool. I like that. Thank you, Bruno. Also, sorry for whatever I took your ocean. <laughs> Well, it's okay. You know, if someone hasn't won an ocean, it's okay. You can claim an ocean as well. Christina. Hi, I'm Christina. Hi. Hi. Um, nice to meet you. Um, I thought of a phoenix, but I'm not sure if that really relates to nature because it's kind of like a mythology thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if that works, but I thought of phoenix because I'm constantly evolving and kind of just being reborn again. The more I learn. The more you learn. Okay, I'll take Phoenix. I'll take Phoenix. That seems to be a natural sort of spiritual evolution in yeah. space and time. That's mm -hmm. that's part of nature. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Sawyer. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm hi. Sawyer. Um, I would say I'm very grounded and having people and places to come back to is very important to me. So um, a root is what a I A root. Mean. Ooh, a root. Wow. Okay, thank you. Boy, this is fascinating. Tara. Hey guys, I'm Tara. Um, I think mine's the lion. And lion. I have this little lion talking stick. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, powerful. A lion. Okay, Tara. Thank you. Okay, who's let me see who's coming up here next. Okay. Uh, LaCoya, did I pronounce your name right? Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm LaCoya. Hi. Um, 
I think I would go with a flying squirrel. And just because squirrel. when I was younger, I got to interact with one in person and they seemed really curious and intuitive, but fun at the same time. So okay. that curiosity. Curiosity. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Bakoya. Adam. I'm going to go with Adam, like A-T-O-M, because oh. number one, it's really close to my name, obviously, but also under the right conditions and pressure, I can grow and change, gain protons. All right. <laughs> Outstanding. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Kelsey. Uh, yeah, I'm Kelsey. Um, I think mine would be like a tree because it's like ever-evolving and it has some roots. Um, yeah. Okay. Evolving. All right. Powerful. Thank you. Jenny. Hi, um, I'm Jenny. I chose a fox because my roommate what, and I say have it again? What did you choose? A fox. Like a fox. A fox. Yeah, my roommate and I have been trying to figure out what our spirit animals are, and she said a fox. And then when we told other people, they're like, "For sure, a fox." Um, also, just <laughs> like foxes, they're like nice and quick, and like they look nice. And then I have this lovely pen as a talking stick. Outstanding, thank you. Nice and quick fox. Okay, thank you, uh, Helene. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, it's Helani. Helani. Okay. I think I'm going to go with the wind, uh, the wind just because you can't see it. You can only feel it. And it's constantly shifting and changing. You never know where it's going to really be or show up next. All right. Thank you. Okay. Remember, everybody have a talking stick. Okay. Wind. Okay. Thank you. What was that? Wait. Helene, what was that? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a teddy bear. Okay. I got it. I got it. That works. Thank you. Kaylin? Um, I'm not sure. I was thinking rain because I've always like felt a connection with rain and it can kind mm -hmm. of like make its own path or it can join other puddles and kind of like become like work well with other droplets of water, but also can be its own thing. Its own thing. Okay. Powerful. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. Emma. Hello, I'm Emma Hello. Rose and I would say my spirit animal or nature name would be uh, a meerkat because um, they're very like community oriented and they thrive when around other people, but also mm -hmm. they're kind of dramatic and a bit clumsy. So <laughs> Uh, that's what I think I'd be and my talking stick I was debating between two things um but I think I'll use this little samurai Ooh. uh not samurai sumo wrestler thing. sumo wrestler okay yeah. okay yeah I've been around one of those a couple of them actually they're pretty big thank you Emma Morgan Morgan Okay. Hello. Hello. Um, I mean, I, I've actually chosen my own name, and my last name I chose is Hawthorne. Uh, it's as far as a Hawthorne tree, and mm. like I just really like the, how trees are and the connection with both the earth and the sky, and just kind of bringing the two separate worlds together in my mind. Mm -hmm. So, and then my talking stick is I have a uh, foxtail. Foxtail. As a talking stick. Excellent. Thank you, Morgan. <laughs> Thank you. Ali? Is that Ali? Or Ali? Yes, Ali. Ali. Um, the first thing that came to mind was rosemary because uh, I just love rosemary. I think it's an underrated flavor. Everyone's obsessed with lavender, but I'm like, rosemary is where it's at. And it has these beautiful flowers in the summer. And it's just, yeah, I just really like that. Um, and my talking stick is this pencil case that says life has the ups and downs and there's little drafts that go up and down okay all right so i want you to do that just like you did it up and down i want you to do that when it's your turn to talk all right <laughs> thank you aiden 
Um, I was thinking about a tree, but then I was also, I like the idea of Ivy because I kind of like spread myself everywhere and kind of mm-hmm. get on to everything, I, do everything. I have a lot of interest and spread myself out. So I said Ivy. Okay. And then as my talking stick, I have like a deck of cards here. Okay. All right. You're a card player too. I do card tricks like magic. Tricks. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfectness. All right, Aiden, thank you. Okay, Megan. Is it me, Megan? <laughs> there's um, two of us. <laughs> yeah, there's two of us. Oh, there's two Megans. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Megan, would you like to go first? I'm going to say no, Megan H. Right. Okay, Megan H. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. I said the sun because it's bright and warm and welcoming, and it's, like, also really intense, but it, like, makes things more okay. cool. And, yeah. Oh, and my turn and? is a water bottle because I'm outside. Okay. All right, water bottle. We got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Pontus. Pronouncing your name right. Yeah, that is how you pronounce it. Um, okay. I don't. I didn't really know what to pick for my nature name. I wanted something that's related to water in some way, and then uh-huh. I ended up choosing dolphin because um, they often travel in packs, and I kind of like having a tight knit group of friends around me. And okay. then I've got a little dolphin here that I will use. A little the- talking stick. Oh man, that totally tied in. Okay. <laughs> Dolphins. Okay. Thank you. Okay. This is up, uh, Tori. Well, I'm feeling a lot like Bruno, Mr. Ocean over here, and I guess Pontus too, since Bruno already took the whole ocean selfishly for himself. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, I think I would be a maverick wave, the ones that they curl over and you can look oh. through them. And I, oh. what I love about maverick waves is they are just wild and they're something that people spend their whole lives chasing after and they have tons of energy. And I feel like that's what I try to bring to the table. Um, and then my talking stick is this super cool water bottle that my best friend got me that it kind of reminds me of, even though there's mountains on it, don't look at those. The colors yeah. kind of remind me of like the ocean waves, you know? Oh, perfect. Yeah, thank you, Tori. Yeah. Powerful. Thank you. Okay. Wow, we're gonna really we're gonna have a session here in a minute, boy. This is okay. Megan S. Yes. The other Megan. Yes, sir. Um, so I I also feel really connected with water, but I think the ocean's scary. So I wasn't gonna pick that. Um, I think that I would go with um more like a lake, like a lake that you can swim in. I grew up as a swimmer, so I've always felt really connected to water. Um, so I think that lakes are kind of more my speed over the ocean. And then okay. my talking stick is a pair of scissors. I'm really crafty. So crafty. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Scissors. Scissors. Okay. Got it. Okay. Eva Rosa. Eva Rosa. I think that's how I pronounce it. Is that right? Eva Rosa? Yes, that was correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will have to go with an otter. I love how much they care about the people they connect with and consistently like stay with them and want to stay connected throughout their time. I also love that they're like a land and water animal and they go back and forth and they are just like so fun and they're a little bit showy and they kind of just love being around humans, but they also love being around each other and engaging and like learning their whole lives. Okay, thank you. And my talking stick will be this um, moisture sensor. Okay, thank you. Excellent. (laughs) It works. Zosa? I pronounce it right? Uh, No, but it's totally okay. Well, pronounce it to me. Tell me. (laughs) Tell me. It's Zosha. Zosha? Yeah, that's how I make a sh sound. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah, no worries. You know, everyone has their own unique way of pronouncing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's, uh, hey, t- that makes you absolutely unique. That's what I it, would say. It's true. Thank you. Uh, my talking yeah. stick just left because it was going to be the cat that was laying on me. So, um, <laughs> you know, we're, we're going with the flow. So uh, I was going to say uh, soil for mine, soil. my nature one. Um, okay. Mostly because... 
um, soil is something that nurtures and soil is mm. something that helps other things grow because it's already content and wholesome in its own own self. So I really mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of the base for everything, which makes me happy. And also I'm a farmer. So that's also kind of <laughs> why yep, I like soil. I got, we got that connection. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Farmer to farmer. Thank you. Of course. I think it's uh, Chantel. Not sure if I pronounced it. Chantel. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, I'm Chantel. Um, I'd say a river because I always want to, I strive to change and move forward. And mm -hmm. um, I also really love rocks. So that goes mm -hmm. along with it well. Um, my talking stick is a eco friendly rainbow pencil. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're, you know, we're in context because, you know, it's Earth Month. So Earth Day is coming up and it's Earth Month and everything is, we should all be focused on nature. So that's a part of our process here. Alec. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking uh, my spirit animal or whatever would be like a seal because uh, mm. like this weekend, I went out kayak fishing on the bay and like mm -hmm. I'll kind of just like be out there by myself and then see some seals kind of check me out and I was you know I was checking them out too and I don't know it's kind of cool because like I'm trying to like catch fish and I'm sure they're mm -hmm. doing the same and uh for my talking stick I have a magic eight ball okay eight ball <laughs> all right perfect appreciate it Alex yeah Carl Hi, so my name's Carl, and for my uh, nature name, I thought of mycelium because it's like the complex, uh, like body of the mushroom, and it like mm -hmm. makes connections. Um, I don't know with like other mycelium bodies, and I just thought that related to me because I like to make connections with ideas mm -hmm. um, to like fully understand them in other ways. Okay, my and you're talking today is this little jar of opals. Oh, okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Madison. Yeah. Uh, my nature name would probably be a hibiscus flower um, hibiscus. just because they thrive in the warmth and they're always happy and vibrant, I guess. Mm -hmm. And my talking stick is this dog. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Madison. Okay, Brian. We're almost home. <laughs> Hello, my talking stick is this longboard, and my nature name I think would be Breeze because I'm calm. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. And board. Okay. Okay. Uh, Alyssa. Yeah. Um. I'm, I think my nature name would be the moon because the moon is a very good listener and sometimes I'm all there and ready to be seen by the world and show myself and sometimes I need to hide away and that's <laughs> the moon does <laughs> and, that huh? yeah. <laughs> that's great um, and my talking stick will be this little squash spark because I'm sitting next to all of my plant parts. okay Okay, I think we're almost there. Meg, you got a large class. Elliot. Yeah, so my talking stick, I was going to choose, or, uh, oh yeah, I'll just do my talking stick first thing. I'm choosing an apple pie. <laughs> yeah. It better be good, Elliot. It better be good. Oh, for sure. And, okay. Uh, and for my animal, I'm going to choose a beaver. Because they like working with others and they're really goal oriented. And I like seeing projects come together in the full in the end. So I'm choosing that. Okay, outstanding. Okay, projects. Okay, got it. Drew, thank you. Um, yeah, so I guess the nature name would be Mountain Goat because. Mountain Goat. Yeah. Tell yeah. me, tell me. I feel at home in the mountains. Um, okay. I feel like you, you know, they're just kind of um, centered and like at peace with being in like risky situations. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You got a talking oh, stick? Pot. Yeah, I've got this little pot that I made or vase. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you, Drew. Jacob. 
Um, so I chose trees for mine because trees. they are very they're very peaceful, they're chill, and they just kind of go with the flow, the breeze. Mm -hmm. And uh, my talking stick is this foam roller that I was close to and that I use all the time. Okay, excellent, excellent. I like to chill with the trees. I chill under trees too. That's cool, Jacob. Thank you, Katie. Um, I'd say I'm a flower because I like to stay rooted, but I also love continuing to grow and blossom. Okay. And you got a talking stick, Katie? Uh, sure. We can use my water bottle. Okay. Well, wait, tell us what's on the water bottle. Um, there's just some random stickers on it uh, that I've just acquired. And okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. John. Um, yeah, I guess mine would probably be a sloth just because it's my favorite animal and mm -hmm. they're pretty calm and relaxed and just patient and slow moving, you know, and I would say I'm pretty similar to that kind of stay in my lane. Mm -hmm. And for a talking stick, I got my TI-84 calculator. Okay, can't go leave home without it. Nope. I got you. Thank you, John. Excellent. Um, Elliot. So my nature name, I'm thinking, will be music. Music. Like music and making music. And it's like kind of flows in nature naturally. Mm -hmm. Naturally, yeah. And uh, my talking stick will be this rock. I'm not sure if it's painted or if it actually just looks like this. It's mm -hmm. pretty glossy, though. So Where do you keep that? Where do you keep that around? Do you keep it with you all the time or around you? Um, it was on this bench in front of me it has like a million rocks on it my mom but likes that's the one, but that's the one you picked up yes it is so it has some significance we're going to find out later okay thanks elliot dylan um i think my uh my na nature name would be a be a monkey because i feel like they're pretty uh easy going and playful and creative and I feel like I can mm -hmm. be like that too once you get to know me mm -hmm. um and my talking stick will be uh the spoon okay yeah it's it's not a, it's it's in a it's a it's a spoon you use not one that just lays around right yeah okay cool all yeah. right it's it's a living spoon we got it thank Sorry. you Dylan all right Okay, have we made it all the way? No, we, we got another, Allie? There's two? Oh, who are we missing? Allie, you've gone already? Noah. Yeah, but... Okay, now I thought Allie went. Noah. Hi, um, yeah, this is my talking stick. It's my Kandama. Um, yeah, I cool. love. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Um, but for my nature name i choose a baby elephant um because elephants are i feel like always depicted as having wisdom um and being mm. really like smart um and i really want to know everything and be full of knowledge and i'm not there yet so i feel like a baby elephant is a good re <laughs> representation of where i'm trying to go okay very good i appreciate that thank you noah titus Unmute, Titus. Unmute. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, no worries. I, I, I said I'd go with uh, Creek because, you know, Bruno stole ocean and someone else stole river. So mm -hmm. I go with the next best thing because, uh, you know, I'm not much right now, but going into big things. Mm -hmm. And my talking stick's going to be this fork, which... Oh. Hey, there we go. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. We got it. Thank you, Titus. Yep. Okay. Have we made it all the way around? Everybody's gone. What about Jenny? I already went. Okay. So I think we made everybody. Everybody had a chance to say. Let me check, make sure we got everybody. Noah, did you Where's go? Her? Who are we missing? No, Noah went. Cool. Sorry. Oh, wait. 
What about John? John went? Did I get John? What about Meg? I got John. Anybody not go? Everybody's got a nature name. Everybody's got not a talking Meg. stick. Meg, oh, Meg? Go. Meg. Okay, uh, I'd, I'd like to be the rainbow after the hailstorm. Okay, this is Meg. <laughs> okay, all right. Rainbow. After the hailstorm. After you know, the hailstorm. Thursday, one of those oh, amazing. yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And, my and uh, is, there, is there, I mean, well, that, that's when rainbows normally come, don't they? Yeah. After, yeah. After some storm, right? After it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, talking stick. And uh, I have a candle. I love lighting candles for in times of transition and for people in it. Uh, the quote on here is from Henry Ward Beecher, which is, blessed are the happiness makers. Blessed are they who know how to shine. Beautiful. Okay. And Caitlin, I think. So and Caitlin. Go. Okay, Caitlin. Okay, Caitlin. I see Caitlin. Um, hi, I'm Caitlin. Um, my nature name, I would say, is probably waterfall. Waterfall. There's like nice areas, like just like calm and tranquility. I feel like I have those um, aspects to myself, and they also like go into like a body of water, so they kind of like flow into a body of water. And I'm pretty like easygoing. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. And then, um, my talking stick is this pen. <laughs> okay, you got a pen. We're good. All right, outstanding. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay, did we get everybody? We can move ahead then. So that's your nature name for the day, and you can you can. I mean, if everybody's accepting, you can always use your nature name if you don't want to use your own name. Okay, because we're in nature today. Okay, let's move forward. Meg, next slide. Are you seeing what you expect to be seeing right now? <laughs> no, go to the next slide. Okay. You're still on the same slide. Yeah, there you go. All right, so principle number one, find common values, common ground, and acts of community with the awareness of our own implicit biases. The process we're gonna go through in principle number one will help you as a facilitator yourself with your friends, your family, using the talking stick story circle concept. That's principle one that we're gonna go through today and principle two of the true storytelling format and process will be making room. What stories, making room, adding or deleting stories in the context of our personal experience in the community, in the classroom, at the university, around the world, as it relates to trying to rid ourselves of systemic racism. And we're gonna share a little bit more about the concept of bias, implicit bias, not only in a race sense, but in terms of anyone, gender, uh, where a person's from, and enhance the fact that diversity adds value to our experience, our knowledge base, and our ability to travel through space, time, and mattering in society, if not the world. So with that, next slide. Ground rules. Number one, confidentiality. You do not tell someone else's story. We will not record any breakouts where you share your personal stories by us or you. Next one. Everybody have a notebook to take notes. I may ask you questions later when you come back from breakouts. We'll have instructions in breakouts. Next rule. Please do not give advice to others or use should statements for self or others, meaning they should or should not do something. 
We're not going to do that in our conversations. Next rule. Please explore and share your beliefs with others openly. This is how we get to the truth. Speak more from the head, from the heart than from the head. We'll talk more about that. The heart versus the head. Next rule. We're working with limited time, so you need to laser in, be con concise in terms of when you talk and share a story, share only one story at a time uh, when we go in a rotation of several stories in the breakouts. Next. Use the talking stick approach that I modeled earlier. When you talk, first person says, I wanna talk in a breakout, raise their stick, and everybody acknowledges they raise their stick first, let them talk. We're gonna be on a clock. We'll have instructions going to each breakout with the timing involved. You'll need to pick a timer in your group to keep everybody on time so everybody gets a chance to share their story. And it could be multiple stories if we stay on time. The multiplicity of stories cre creates a new awareness, a new consciousness, a new understanding, a new opening for us to restory. It, it allows us to reach back and Identify patterns of little while moments that'll happen in our psyche as we share and listen to the multiple stories. Next rule. And we did say use the talking stick. Next slide. True storytelling is based on, as I mentioned, David M. Bolge, who's a professor emeritus from New Mexico State, who I worked with coming out of the Anderson Graduate School of Management, running a the Joint Center for Community Research in partnership with UCLA. And that's where I got introduced to his work in community and with uh, individuals and organizations and institutions, but mainly in the context of networking and understanding the power of communication and sharing, st sharing stories, allowing people to meet you from where they're at not trying to prejudge, determine, put a label, or you know, uh, in any way guide the story that one would tell you. So again, I did this workshop. I've done it several times. We started in August of last year, obviously associated with many things that were happening. Um, you know, started with the pandemic, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. All these things open up uh, a number of disparities, uh, identifying uh, marginalized communities across the country. And I thought this wouldn't happen again because I lived this in the 60s with the riots, uh, with the civil rights movement, the black power movement, all these things that had to happen for me to even go to college. Because before I went to college, very few African-Americans in this country got into a college or even were prepared to go to college. That's uh, only, you know, 50 years ago or so. So we thought we were making great progress, but we have some challenges. And the only way we're gonna overcome these challenges, whether it's race, whether it's gender, whether it's where we're from, what community versus another community, whether it's a party, whatever it is, is we have to listen to each other. We're all human. And we, we are human beings and we have things that we want to achieve as human beings, but we can only achieve that when we come to a common understanding of how to move forward in the resolution, uh, reconciliation of our differences and the resolution that is necessary to agree on how we uh, achieve. And, and I, I don't like the word solving problems because I think everything in front of us is truly an opportunity. So with that, next slide. This is what you can expect to learn today. How to use ethical approaches of true storytelling to facilitate conversations about racism, problems and solutions utilizing the talking stick method. Align the inner dialogue of the mind with the inner dialogue of the heart. We're focused on the heart. If you're in the music, You'll know that music, nature, all these things that you mentioned to me are the heart. You, that resonates with your heart. 
if you put the mind on it, then we try, we try to change things. We try to tear things up and rebuild them. That's not nature. Nature, your heart aligns naturally with nature. So we want to work on aligning our head and our heart, the dialogues between the two. Because your heart says one thing and your head says another thing because you've been reading a book or you've been embedded in what we call the Western ways of knowing versus the indigenous ways of knowing. Embody outer dialogues with others, your verbal storytelling using the walking and talking with the, the walking and talking stick. I think I said that. Consider both doing and being, what we call the do, be, do, be, do. Meaning that, you know, you talk about one who can sort of uh, chew gum and walk at the same time. Well, we need to be conscious of our ability to live an ethical life, uh, to own your living story, to own the truth, to experience a deepened practice of embodied reflection. In this case, we're talking about racism and racial relationships. As we know, uh, studies is recently, and we're not even talking about the studies today, the last study, major study in 2015, indicated that about 70% of the country, 70% of the white population in this country, and we'll, we'll see a slide on that, has no connection on a regular basis, either in work or in their community with people of color. So this is something that we have to get to know each other, get to hear each other's experience, get to identify the common truths that we have in the, in the world that we want to see today and into the future. Again, truth is about true common values, common ground, and identifying and becoming aware of our own implicit biases. And then we can begin to make room create safe spaces to discuss these things and move forward. Okay, next slide. Uh, we wanna play this video to give you a sort of a context of race relations in America. Sound on. I'm not hearing any sound, no. No, no sound. Thank you for, thank you, sorry. I think I need to press an advanced share for that too. Okay. One sec, sorry about that. Okay, while you're doing that. Can I can I have some uh, wizard wizard guidance from one of our? Yeah, Meg. Tech, just yeah. unshare your screen, real quick, and then when you click share screen, there's a little box in the bottom left that says share sound with it. Do you see that? Not bottom left. Bottom left of the like, uh, box. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's just the excitement of it all. I know. 2015 CNN and Kaiser Family Foundation poll found about half of Americans think racism is a big problem. The United States is often called the Great Melting Pot, but it's a country that struggled with race relations throughout its history and still does today. A 2015 CNN and Kaiser Family Foundation poll found about half of Americans think racism is a big problem. 
one that doesn't seem to be getting better. Two thirds said racial tensions in the United States had increased over the last decade. More than half of blacks said they had experienced some form of racial discrimination in their lifetimes, from being denied a job to fearing for their lives. About a third of whites and Hispanics reported similar experiences. Blacks and Hispanics were also far more likely than whites to say that they had been unfairly treated in the last month in a public place, such as a restaurant or in a store, because of their race. Segregation is still a reality as well, at work and at home. 60% of whites said their work colleagues were all or mostly white, and close to 70% of whites said either their social circle or their neighborhood was mostly white. When asked of certain factors, like discrimination, a lack of educational opportunities, and broken families, played a major role in the social and economic problems facing their communities, the majority of blacks and Hispanics said yes. Okay, we're good. You can stop there. Okay, so that just gives you a little context as uh, Meg brings the slide back up. That is That was in 2015. And we obviously have seen what has happened in 2020, 2021, and we're still working through this whole thing. And it's gonna require, that's why the Beloved Community Initiative is so important. It didn't start with Martin Luther King, it started in 1920 something with Josiah Royce, who coined the concept of a beloved community where everyone was equally accepted. And that that was the only way that this country was gonna move forward. He started the, the concept. Uh, Dr. King joined his uh, Redemption and Reconciliation um, organization around the Beloved Community Initiative and took it over on himself. He, he made it more popular because he, he put it in all his talks about the need for us to move beyond uh, you know, violence, move beyond hatred for any reason and move more toward a uh, collective and collaborative understanding of how we were going to work together and build a community together for all of us. So principle one, truth. You yourself must be true. This is a dynamic, Karthik uh, experience to be true to yourself. To say to myself, like, you know, did I put in the effort? A lot of times you want to get a good grade. Is it, I mean, can I ask myself, did I really put in the effort, right? So we're talking about the context of race relations. Is it true that I had a perception before I even knew a person just by looking at them or I heard their voice? You know, these types of things we have to deal within ourselves. So you gotta be true to yourself in order to even consider a change. It starts with the individual and the individuals when we work together with groups of people, if enough people listen and reach that common space in truth, we will identify what the truth is and we will come to some agreement, some consensus about how to change something. But when you don't deal with the truth and you continue to deal with a lie, you have no outcome that moves forward. I mean, Einstein, Albert Einstein has long, long said historically, we all know <laughs> his thing was, if you do the same thing, you get the same outcome in essence. So next slide. You yourself must be true and prepare the energy and effort in healing racism. These are the three questions that I'm gonna ask you now, you personally, embody these questions that I'm asking you. When you saw the video, did you check out the racism associated with those statistics in, the, in that experience? Do you yourself believe in equality, equity, and inclusion in all ways? Can you sustain 
get energized and not burn out into the future. I believe the last one, I'll put an ad that because all of you had a nature name, I believe you can have the energy and to sustain in the future because nature allows us to do that. Next slide. We, I talked earlier about the heart and the mind. It's like two people talking to you. I didn't tell you earlier, but I was a former athlete. I was a collegiate All-American, Kodak, United Press International, signed a contract with the Los Angeles Rams, professional football, and got hurt. One of the things I learned from sports is the concept of focus. So you have to focus on something very intently in order to execute it. Now, and you do that when you study and everything else. But there's a thing that happens spiritually with the heart that sets certain people apart. You can have somebody who could literally learn something on a rote basis, but then you can have somebody take it to the next level like music, like a musician, go beyond what's written on the paper and connect to their heart and turn off they can close their eyes and play to a whole different dimension without reading music or anything. That's what we're talking about from the heart. And if you lock into that, your capacity is unbounded by Western knowledge. You have locked into nature, which opens up all kinds of cavities in you as a human being, because we are a part of nature. So focus on balancing the heart over the mind the heart over the head. I'm not telling you to throw your head out the window, but I'm telling you to listen to your heart so we can have a balance, a more balanced approach. Next slide. True storytelling has a wholeness of heart, head and heart. As David Bolge, uh, uh Jens, and Lena Brun all speak to in the True Storytelling Principles book. Integrity from an integral to a whole means congruence of head and heart. Next slide. Okay, here we go. We're teeing up to the first breakout and it's focused on lying. Lying is a prevalent, existing, really destructive, process of sustaining human beings sustaining themselves through lying. So we're going to go through attacking lying, three rounds. First question, one question per round. Each round's two to three minutes. Let's see, we got six. So let's say, let's make it uh, three minutes. They give us 10 minutes. Three minutes will give us, okay. Your group will receive a question to answer every few minutes, start answering the question when it resides. So the first person, pick up the talking stick, start talking. You're gonna, have, you're gonna have a total of 10 minutes for every round for all three questions. Each time you get a question that's gonna come on the screen, you're gonna only have per person 10 to 15 seconds to answer the question. That's why I said earlier, you have to be concise in that, 10 or 15 second response. That's it. That's all you get. So make it concise. And if it's concise, it's going to be powerfully heard. Research says in general, we are not good at telling when someone is lying to us. Yet most of us have experienced knowing when someone else was lying, especially when we know the person well. This is scientific research. The based conclusion. So, okay, Meg, we're ready. Before the breakout, think of someone you know well. Take a moment to think of someone you know well and make it someone that you can tell by their body language, in this case, when there is a racial prejudice. 
It could be a, a boss, a relative, a neighbor, a friend, you know. Uh, it could be that their ears get red or their, their speech tone change or their use of words or their breathing gives you a cue uh, that they, they are lying about something in the context related to prejudice. Okay, next slide. Okay, question number one. We're ready to go. When do you observe, let you know when there's person discriminating? We're in the breakout. Raise your hand, if somebody can raise a hand, then we can uh, get what trends or patterns around reasons and times discrimination keeps happening that you heard from the stories that were shared? No personal comments, just a summation of patterns and, and trends. Reasons, times, discrimination keeps happening. Uh, you're putting that in the chat. Uh, let me see what we got. Anybody put anything in the chat? Okay. Okay. Uh, is, this is preservation and comfort. Surrounding peers are afraid to speak. These are patterns. Close-minded perceptions of how other people behave and think. These are patterns for reasons times discrimination keeps happening. Uh, bias, bias, generational factors. Okay, make sure we save the chat, web, uh, uh, Meg, at the end of the day. Power have over others, confusion around how to react, perception of superiority, lack of awareness, these are the trending patterns that we see. Reasons, times, discrimination keep happening. Giving blame to something, cultural expectations and perceptions, defensiveness, not willing to learn, no personal ties, environment, environment of upbringing, preferences toward uh, specific groups, ignorance, ignorance, no curiosity. Okay. whether or not bad results from discrimination, whether successful or not. So give me now, uh, these are stories you heard that maybe there were some bad outcomes or successful outcomes in an environment where discrimination was recognized. Can you put a break in there, Meg, on the, on the responses? Can you put like a break in there that we move into a, another trend? Okay, I see you did. Okay, good. Okay, so now we're putting in chat results that you identified that were trends associated with your stories, bad results from discrimination, whether successful or not, that you heard in some of your stories. We don't want the personal story. We just want the trend or the pattern. Less innovation. Uh, results are identified that are associated with stories, bad results. Okay, you, you put that in there. Uh, loss of friends. Okay, good. Those are results. Shame of speaking up. Those are results. Good. Bad results from discrimination, whether successful or not. Shame. Lack of trust in family. Low, no growth oriented. Discourse, loss of self, loss of trust in the family, social rejection, conflict, guilt. Very good. More discrimination. Yeah. That's good. Good recognition. Good recognition from all of you in terms of the, the, the patterns, the outcomes. So these are things that we want to pay attention to. Violence, rejection, cancellation, and so forth. Okay. Very good. Due to authority structure feeling we have no voice, silence of voice, authority structure, fear from pain. Yeah, huge, huge. That's, that's huge movement uh, recognition in your mindset. That's good. That's good. So this is, these are the patterns that help us then look at making room for new stories. Okay, let's go to the next, next slide. We got to move on to the next one. Okay, principle number two. Making room for the healing or racism 
already there. So what that means is there's stories already. We heard stories and there are little wow moments in these stories that we can pull out of those for how to go about changing the story, the pattern of stories that we just witnessed. Obviously this is a process and you keep going through it and you, you do it in iterations and it may take some time, but if you can identify how to make room for other stories that are different than the stories you heard, that's creativity. That's reimagining. You're, you're, and you can build off of what you already know. Okay, very simply. Next slide. Okay, so this is breakout number two. Uh, again, the principles are the same. Um, three questions, very brief 15 second answers. We're going to go three rounds, 10 minutes. Again, share the story, uh, pick up someone to share the story first. Uh, we're listeners. We are listening to the other person's story. Use deep listening because out of that comes these patterns and it, it, it moves our consciousness when we listen versus talking. Um, when it's your turn, hold the talking stick. Try to use the talking stick because it forces us to shift from a speaking to a recognizable listening mindset. Uh, it's okay to pass if you're not ready and, and a person can come back around again to have your story told. Continue the story, uh, story circle until we bring you back. All right, so we're ready. Okay, questions going to break out. Experiencing anything different, and we should be able to listen and 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 hear and see other folks' experiences. That's the beauty of this thing. And if we can do that, it starts one person at a time. That's what we call micro a micro action. If everybody took a micro action together, imagine what the world would be like. All you need to have is one or two micro actions every ten ten years and you would see things change. But it starts with each one of us. That's where it starts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oscar. Okay, thank you. So great, All deeply right. appreciated. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you so much. You thank, you. thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll follow up with you, Meg. Thank you. Bye.